Hi, I'm Jerry Harvey from JH Audio. Well, JH13 is a six-driver three-way. Actually, it's the world's first six-driver three-way. Dual low, dual mid, and dual high. It's um, and the 16 is the first eight-driver three-way earpiece, which is four lows, two mids, two highs. The main difference between those two earpieces is the audio signature and the headroom. The uh, the 13 has more of a neutral audio signature, very wide, accurate frequency response out to 18k. But it has a six, and the bottom end response has a 6 dB bump at 50 hertz, rolls back down to accurate by 125 to 160 hertz. So it's very neutral, neutral earpiece with a nice musical bottom. The 16 was originally designed to be a performance piece because this 13 had about 3 dB less input sensitivity than the than the than than the 16. So that extra 3 dB of input sensitivity when and you're in a live situation makes a huge difference. Especially when you're, you know, starting to overdrive the board a little bit, you're hitting the transmitter hard, uh, and the, you know, the artist is driving a bell pack. So sometimes you really need the 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 input sensitivity to get unity gain kind of all situated, so you're not going above zero on your VU meters. The um, the 16 is actually still a killer audiophile portable music earpiece because it's. The main difference is that it's got 12 dB of, of boost at 50 hertz and back to accurate by 125 to 160. It has the same mids and high extension, uh, the same audio signature between the mids and the highs as a 13. So it's basically a 13 with more punch. So it's depending on your musical, uh, your audio taste, you know, how you like your bass set. If you like a nice punchy bottom end with, you know, when the 808 samples hit or the kick drum, the bottom end of the kick drum, you want punch on that you'll want the 16. If you're more of a jazz person or you want something that's like perfectly accurate, like a near-field set of studio monitors, uh, you'd like the 13. Now both of those earpieces, uh, I've created a new thing called the uh, Freak Phase Waveguide. So basically the Freak Phase Waveguide, what I've done is I've made the drivers all ar arrive at the same time at the end of the ear canal within a hundredth of a millisecond, which basically corrects the phase curve of the earpiece. When you look at the the, the phase curve of the 13 and the 16, they're no more than plus 10 or minus 10 uh, degrees of, of uh, phase sway off of zero. Where you look at most of the competitors, six driver three ways, the lows are sometimes almost 180 degrees out. And they do a nice little ski slope around 1 to 2K where it's major cancellation and they're 90 degrees out on the highs. So, uh, we've got a chart here that you can take a look at and kind of demonstrates that. The the orange line is the is the 16, and the blue line is a a competitor's six driver three way. So you can zoom in on that, or you can do whatever you want. What happens when the earphone has a very coherent phase curve is that the center image becomes very clean and clear and articulate. Anything between 10 and 2 is where the phase cancellation starts to, to really occur when you have an incorrect phase response in an earpiece or a speaker or anything else. So when you have something panned hard right or hard left, it sticks out, it sounds like a really wide sound stage because it's not interacting with the other speaker and there's no cancellation. But as you get towards mono, the center image, that's when all the cancellation occurs. So between 10 and 2, you, if with this phase, this waveguide with a correct, you know, a coherent phase curve, what you end up with is very detailed, articulate, uh, center image. You have the ghost image of the vocal right in the center of your head, and you can hear in just you know five, six, three degrees of any kind of panning off center, and you hear that, and you you hear all the separation in the uh, detail and you know very articulate uh, layering of of instruments. And so the 13 and 16 are the only two earphones on the planet that are actually phase correct. Took me I don't know 16 years to figure that out. So well, I actually invented the hybrid technology back when I was the founder of Ultimate Ears. And it was, uh, it was really kind of a good compromise back then because the dynamic had nice warmth bottom end and the, and the, the balanced armature at a point in time didn't have a whole lot of bottom end. So it was a nice natural combination if you used a diaphragm on bottom and you used a, a balanced armature on top. But, you know, you have problems with diaphragms. They're, they're one of the worst uh, candidates for phase. Their phase is all over the place. And then 
there's no uh, real headroom or dynamic range. They just store it really quickly. So that's why I went back to balanced armatures and I started, you know, making double dual armatures and then quad armatures. So now I've got stuff that's going down to 10 hertz. The thing I do 130 dB in the low end before it starts to distort. It's got lots of dynamic range, lots of lots of uh, you know hot input sensitivity for live or listening to playback and it's a much more controlled bottom end. You can, it's a very repeatable bottom end. Where a diaphragm, if you change one thing about the volume or one canal is larger than the other, then you end up with a totally different frequency response from right ear to left ear. So even though Ultimate Ears owns a patent and they're really the only, only company that should be building the hybrid, anybody else is infringing on that patent, um, I choose not to even go down that path because I prefer you know, I moved away from that, you know, 10 years ago and decided that if I keep putting my, you know, pushing the technology forward on the balanced armatures, I'm going to have a very repeatable earpiece that has wide frequency response, input, hot input sensitivity, and, you know, dynamic range. Behind me, you can see the video of a company called Lantos Technology. They've invented a 3D ear scanner. Currently, if you'd like to purchase an in-ear monitor, you have to get a silicone cast of your ear and impression. So you have to go to an audiologist or come to our shop or go somewhere where someone can actually do that process for you. We have pretty good repeatability as far as fit-wise, you know, about 90%, but this is going to make it 100%. And the reason is, is that we do an open mouth impression. So 80% of the population, when you open your mouth, the canal expands. But 20% of the population, when you open your canal, that can uh, open your mouth, the canal restricts. So most of the problems we ever have with the fit issue is the 20% factor that the canal is actually inverse when they open their mouth. What's nice about this scanner is that it's very, very accurate and you can actually see the dynamic range. If you notice uh, there's a point in this video where the, the, you, you see the patient opening and closing her, her mouth and you see how the actual ear canal changes shape and it's amazing how much an ear canal changes shape. It's a huge breakthrough and it's going to be a, you know, much easier to get impressions starting first quarter of next year.